you welcome to my channel so we are going to look at the procedures that the auditor is supposed to first look at before before signing an engagement letter yeah before signing first is that they're supposed to check whether the outgoing auditor's removal or resignation is in accordance to the law yeah, they have to first find out and they can find that out by talking to the outgoing auditor or the predecessor auditor. Then another procedure is that they're supposed to ensure that the new auditor's appointment, like their appointment, is valid. And they're supposed to obtain a copy of the resolution that was passed. A resolution is like a decision of the decision that was made in a meeting. Then they are supposed to check whether the preconditions of an audit present. We are going to look at the preconditions of an audit. Then lastly, they are supposed to check whether there is a limitation on the scope of the audit. Those are four. So in this video, we are going to look at the preconditions of an audit. So according to ISA 210, it requires auditors to accept a new audit engagement after assessing the following three conditions to see if they exist or not. Yeah, it's like conditions, but they call them pre because you're supposed to to see whether they exist before you accepting the engagement. So it's the reason why they're called preconditions to an audit. In order for you to audit, they are supposed to first exist. So the first one we have, the first precondition is financial statements will be prepared using financial reporting framework required by laws and IFRSs. So you have to first find out whether the company's is going to prepare all the company prepares financial statements in accordance with the financial reporting framework as it is required by the laws and IFRSs. Then you will have to find out, secondly, whether management has agreed that they are responsible for the following. Yeah, first whether management has agreed that they are responsible for preparation of financial statements that show a true and fair view using the reporting framework. It is the responsibility of management to prepare the financial statements. But then at the same time, those financial statements must show a true and fair view of what takes place in the company and they must use the reporting framework. Yeah, then... Uh, Secondly, internal control, that management is responsible for internal control to enable them prepare financial statements which are free from material misstatements. Internal control is like how things are managed within, how sales are made, how purchases are made, and all that, the steps that are followed. Yeah, we shall be looking at that in details in... Uh, Topic three and four. Yeah, in the next topics. Yeah, so the second precondition to an audit is that management must agree to their responsibility. First, preparation of financial statements that show a true and fair view. Then secondly, that they're responsible for internal control that will enable them to prepare the financial statements. Then the third precondition to an audit is that management will provide unrestricted access to all the information necessary for an audit. Yeah, like the auditor must be able to access whatever information that they want at any time. So those are the three preconditions to an audit. Financial statements will be prepared using the financial reporting framework. Then management must agree to its responsibility, then management will provide unrestricted access to all the information necessary for an audit. If they are not available, you do not accept the engagement.
here then there is this knot down here this an audit engagement may be accepted without the above preconditions if it is if it is required as in the case of public sector audit if it is required by law so if it is required by law or if your auditing may be a ministry of the government ministry of finance things like that ministry of health yeah you can ignore the above preconditions to an audit and just accept so an audit engagement may be accepted without the above preconditions if it is required by law for example in case of a public sector audit yeah so let's look at the limitations on the scope of the audit like the things that can limit the auditor from doing whatever they they want to do the first one is unrealistic deadlines in case your client gives you unrealistic deadlines maybe like we want things done maybe in three days yet there is a lot of work to do so you might end up not evaluating everything and maybe even issue a wrong opinion then not accepting some firms to perform their work like when they are when they are picky like they they do not accept everyone to perform their their work meaning that they're hiding something yeah or they're up to something then denying access to the premises, key personnel or documents. Like when they do not allow the auditor to maybe access some offices, to open some rooms, to access some documents or to talk to particular people in the organization. Those become limitations to the, on the scope of the audit. Yeah, there are very many got only three yeah these are some of the limitations so thanks for watching let's catch up in my next video